from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. All right, coming okay. to the stage, our next authors. Judy Sierra is the author of many critically acclaimed children's books, including The Sleepy Little Alphabet, Born to Read, Mind Your Manners, B.B. Wolf, and Tell the Truth, B.B. Wolf. Now, Mark Brown has illustrated many popular picture books, including Wild About Books and Born to Read. He's also the creator of PBS's six-time Emmy Award-winning <laughs> Arthur television show. Yeah! He spends his time in New York City and Martha's Vineyard with his wife. Judy Sierra and Mark Brown have partnered together on the New York Times best-selling picture book, Wild About Books and his follow-up, Zuzical, as well as Born to Read. This fall, the famed duo returns with another delightful collaboration, Wild About You. Let's give a big welcome to Mark Brown and Judy Sierra. Hi. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. It's great to be here. I love seeing all these families here and having fun thinking about books and reading. Yeah. And now, you, you all know my books about Arthur and the TV shows about Arthur, but thank you. <laughs> but a few years ago, I decided that I was going to go back to where I started before I started writing the Arthur books, and that is being an illustrator. And I had the good luck to find a wonderful collaborator in Judy Sierra who wrote some amazing books that I got to illustrate. Right, and I had the great luck to have an editor who knew Mark, and who knew that, that Mark Brown would illustrate my um, stories. It's been wonderful. We have a new book. I have a question for you. Raise your hand if you like babies. Raise your hand if you like diapers. <laughs> Raise your hand if you wear diapers. <laughs> Adults, no, don't do that. <laughs> well, I was thinking maybe before we read the book, we could start with a little game. How about if I draw a baby in her diaper and you guys help me with the drawing by thinking of things that babies like and things that babies need, okay? All right, let's start with the baby. We'll have her smiling because she's really happy to be here. And she has hair. She's not one of those bald babies. <laughs> we'll give her a little bow here. Okay, I'll have her waving to you because she's really happy to be here today. And here's her diaper. The sticky little tabs on the side that holds her diaper together. And here are her chubby little baby legs. Okay, now... This is where you guys come in. We need to add some things to the pictures that babies like. What do babies like? What does she need? A bottle. A bottle. That's an excellent suggestion. We'll give her a bottle over here in case she gets thirsty. What else do babies need? What? Toys. What kind of toys? How about a cuddly little stuffed animal? A little bunny. All right, we'll give her a little bunny. Aww. What else does our baby need? What do you think? A monkey. A monkey? <laughs> a little monkey. I love drawing monkeys. Thank you for asking for a monkey. <laughs> Do you think our baby's going to get hungry? Should we give her something to eat? How about a nice big bowl of smushed up 
peas. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's give her a bowl of smooshed up peas. I think I need a green marker for this. All right, here are the peas. And you know how babies, they don't eat with their spoons. They like to eat with their fingers. So she gets the peas on her fingers, and then she touches her face, and she gets some peas there. And then she has a little scratch on her tummy, and she gets some peas there. And then she tries to take her diaper off, and she gets peas there. <laughs> She's going to need a bath pretty soon. What else should we give our baby? A rattle. That's a good idea. <laughs> Let's give her a rattle down here. Babies like to shake things and make noise. What else should we give our baby? A crib. A crib so she can take a nap. Excellent idea. What else? What do you think? A bedroom. A what? Bedroom. A bedroom? Okay, we'll give her a bedroom. <laughs> she needs a nice window. Here's a door to her bedroom. It's a Victorian house. How about, how about a book? Yeah. We want our baby to like books. All right, let's give her a book over how, here. How about this book? A kid's book? No, this, give her this book. That book? This book. That's a great idea. Yeah. Would you like to hear this book? Yeah. All, All right, right, we're going to read it to you right now. It takes place in the zoo. Judy's very good at writing really good stories that take place in the zoo. Right. This is our third book that takes place in a zoo. And um, I like writing about the zoo and putting in lots of animals. And, and we've had the animals learn how to read and we've in Wild About Books. And we had the animals learn how to put on a musical in Zoosical. And then Mark sent me an idea. Mark is always sending me ideas, but this one seemed like a really, really good idea. He said, let's write a book about adoption. And so we wrote, we worked on Wild About You, which is a book about baby fever at the zoo. Who's new at the zoo? Brand new babies, that's who. Some popped from their mamas. Some hatched out of eggs. Some walked right away on their long, wobbly legs. Some babies are fluffy. Some babies are hairless. Some babies are shy. Oops! Some babies are quite careless. They wander away and get lost at the zoo, and their mamas and papas can't find them. Can you? So this, this page here uh, is, is designed to have kids find the babies. It's kind of like a... A where's Waldo, except Waldo is a tiger at the zoo. This just isn't fair, said the tree kangaroo. All my neighbors have babies, and I want one too. So do we, moaned the pandas. We're black, white, and blue. Blech, babies are awful, the crocodiles told them. They bite and they scratch and they howl when you hold them. They won't do a thing that you want them to do, and on top of all that, they make mountains of poo. May we have your babies? The pandas asked sweetly. No, no, cried their parents. We love them completely. Grrr, grumbled the pandas. It's so hard to wait. Then, a big orange van rumbled through the zoo gate, and the sign on the van made their eyes open wide. Do you think there's a cub or a joey inside? 
They rushed to the van, and they peeked in the door. On the floor lay a little brown box, nothing more. This egg is endangered, the zoo vet explained. Who would like to adopt it? I can't, croaked the crane. It's too small, hissed the ostrich. It's too big, squawked the auk. I haven't got room in my nest, screeched the hawk. The tree kangaroo scrambled forward to snatch it. She said, I have room in my pouch. I will hatch it. No matter what kind of a bird it might be, it can live in my tree and sing sweetly to me. She kept the egg cozy for week after week till she heard the tap, tap of her new baby's beak. I've hatched out a penguin, she said. Oh, my word, I wasn't expecting this sort of a bird. Penguins don't fly. Penguins never sing sweetly. But that doesn't matter. I love you completely. Yes, you are the answer to all of my wishes. Though I may need some help because penguins eat fishes. So, the puffins delivered fresh fish every day. The flamingos invited them over to play. And one happy day, she hopped her first hop. A super sensational pangaroo bop. Then she shouted, Hey, Mom, I want back in my pouchy. The pandas, of course, were still gloomy and grouchy. They rolled on the ground, groaning, bah, and boo-hoo. Then beneath the bamboo, they heard someone say, mew. And a kitten jumped into Ms. Panda's wide lap, picked a comfortable spot, and curled up for a nap. What a curious cub, Mr. Panda declared. You're a kind of a sort of a cat of a bear. <laughs> you're roly, you're poly, you're quite pandelicious. Yes, you are the answer to our wildest wishes. The tigers stopped by with fresh milk every day. The mercats invited him over to play. They snoozed in the shade of the kangaroo's tree and all were as happy as happy could be. If you're looking for babies much newer than new, here's a cool panda cat and a sweet pangaroo. Every kid needs a family, we know that that's true. And to bring up a whole, to bring up a baby, it, it takes, takes a, a whole zoo. zoo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I don't know if you, if you guys have any questions for us, because I know a lot of you are thinking about writing your own books and being authors and illustrators or making TV shows. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I won't be afraid to answer them, and neither is Judy. No. Yes. Pacifier to that picture, please. What? Can you, ask a can you add a pacifier to that picture, please? <laughs> yes, I will. Pacifier is an excellent idea. Babies love them, and so do parents. <laughs> Let's put that pacifier right down here. I'm so glad you t said that. We needed a pacifier. Yes. Oh. How about Arthur's dog? How about Arthur's dog, pal? Yeah. You want to add him to the picture? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's put Pal right over here. There are his floppy little ears. Arthur got a dog because we didn't get one at our house. We got a cat. We got two cats, Lola and Romeo. They're brother and sister. Okay, we'll have Pell wagging his tail because he's happy to be here. Yeah. How about the thing on the baby's crib that they hit? Oh, one of those mobiles? A mobile on the baby's crib. That's a good idea. We could add that.
Yes. Books. Am I going to make any more Arthur books? Well, I just wrote a new Arthur book uh, about a year ago for the 35th anniversary. I never thought Arthur would be around 35 years. <laughs> or the TV show for 16 now. Yeah, and PBS just asked us for two more years of Arthur TV shows, so Yay. we're busy working on those. <laughs> yes, but uh, what was your question again? I said, are you going to make any more Arthur books? Well, I, I guess I was trying to avoid the answer. <laughs> I'm not going to, I don't think I will be making any more Arthur books. Oh, I have a question. Do, do you mind when kids write their own Arthur books at home? No, I love it. I love it when kids send me their ideas for Arthur. And uh, you guys write better Arthur books than I do. A and when you draw pictures of Arthur, I save them all. And I have drawers and drawers full of them. I probably have a million pictures of Arthur <laughs> now over 35 years. And uh, someday I'd love to put them all together in a book because each one is unique. It is so amazing that there could be so many pictures of the same character and each one is a little bit different. Yeah. Yes? Um, why aren't you making any more Arthur books? <laughs> Security! <laughs> uh, why am I, well, I've written over a hundred Arthur books. Don't you think that's enough? <laughs> <laughs> has anyone here she read all 100 up. Arthur books? That's what I want to know. You need more. <laughs> what, you need more? Okay, well, it, you know, all of the Arthur books come from things that happen in real life. Maybe something will happen to my granddaughter, Isabella, who's going to go, and she's in second grade this year. Uh, maybe something will happen to her, and, I, and it will give me an idea for a book. How about you? Like I said, security! <laughs> Maybe, we'll, we'll talk afterward. <laughs> yeah, questions over here? Yeah. Really loud so we can hear you, sweetie. What is your favorite book? That I wrote or someone else wrote? That you wrote. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Arthur's Teacher Trouble. <laughs> because I had a teacher like Mr. Ratburn. Would you like to hear what it was like to be in his class? Yeah. All right, I have to draw fast. We only have two minutes. I don't know. How many of you ever had a teacher that was not your favorite teacher? My seventh grade math teacher was exactly like Mr. Ratburn. That's what gave me the idea for the character. You know, I get all the characters in those books are based on real people that I knew in third grade, most of them. But Mr. Ratburn looked just like this. He had a long pointed nose and he had little hairs that stuck out of the end of his nose. He never combed his hair. We thought we saw bugs fly out, but we weren't really sure about that. He had eyes that followed us all over the classroom. He could see you even when you, he was out of the classroom, he knew what you were doing. He wore the same green corduroy suit every single day. He had these little tiny paws that hung out of the end of his sleeves. And you didn't just walk into Mr. Ratburn's class. You had to get in alphabetical order before you could go in the classroom. And then you had to go directly to your seat and sit down. And you weren't allowed to pick up your pencil without permission. And once my friend Brian Carlson was putting a rubber band around his books before the bell rang, and the rubber band shot out of his hand by mistake. And it landed on Mr. Ratburn's desk. Brian had to go to death row. It was an empty row of chairs Mr. Ratburn kept in the back of the classroom. I always worried that Mr. Rathbun, who was the inspiration for Mr. Ratburn, would find out, and he did. I got a letter from him. It was the nicest letter. 
<laughs> he turned out to be really nice, and he was spending his retirement years talking to kids about the importance of reading and billing himself as the real Mr. Ratburn. <laughs> Well, you guys have been wonderful. You've Thank been you. a wonderful audience. Thank you for reading our books. Oh, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful festival. Thank you. thank you. All right, have fun today. See ya. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.